Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. In the previous one, we looked at late-game goals everyone should potentially schedule at some point in their RuneScape careers. And today, it is time. It's time to look at end-game goals. Once maxing is just one of the few things you want to do in the game, and so you can also keep the gameplay fresh. If you guys enjoyed this video, we have a lot of content like this on the channel that we've been putting out for the past couple of weeks, and we have a couple more weeks of content coming up. So a subscription with notifications on would be greatly appreciated, and one thing I've been asking you guys in this little series is to like the video only if you find some of these tips to be useful for either you or other players in the community. And just like in the past, today I'm going to speedrun through the structure and the disclaimers for today's video. Video. And that is what we're going to start with, a few disclaimers just to give you guys a little bit of context and some ground rules for the top 10. That's exactly what's coming up next, my top 10 end game goals for, you know, any player looking into quote unquote completing RuneScape. And then I'm going to try to give you my personal opinion as to what means completing RuneScape, even though that's technically impossible. And finally, at the end, I am going to show you guys the winners of the previous comment contest with showing you the bond as well as the winning comment in the previous video at the late game goals. As for the disclaimers, remember that this is just my personal opinion and this one is very special because it's the one I am more familiar with at this particular moment, as my account has been at the end game state for quite a while and well, these are the things that I look forward to doing every time I log into RuneScape hopefully. Next, remember that just a few topics, a few of the uh, parts in the top 10 are going to have multiple things in them because it could potentially make sense to group them together and not having them separately. And last but not least, remember that these are just a few general topics, uh, although when you are in the end game, there's not as much to do as there are in the early, mid and late game stages, but these are just a few general goals for everyone to look forward to. And uh, lastly, remember that this is not specifically made for Iron Man, but you guys could also still benefit or I guess learn from this little list. So with that, let's begin. Number one and most important when you are thinking about quote unquote completing RuneScape, to no one's surprise, it is going to be the max cape. Achieving level 99 in every single skill will show not only your dedication, but, uh, you know, maybe your knowledge in this nice and awesome game. And not only is it a flex item, this is also one of the best, if not in my personal opinion, the best and most, the, the item that is going to give you the most utility in the entire game, because for those of you who don't know, the max cape is a combination of all 23 skill capes in the game. You are going to have all of those teleports, all of those passive benefits that you would uh, have if you are wearing the actual skill cape for the skill that you are, you know, flexing, I guess. And this is one of the most important, if not the most important item in your RuneScape journey. If, you know, you came into the game with the idea that you want to quote-unquote complete it. I keep saying that uh, completing RuneScape in, in quotation marks, but that is exactly what we are going to talk about next. Tip number two is exactly what I did after maxing myself, and it would be getting an Infernal Cape. Now, a few people could say that this is a late game goal, but for people like me who are not really versed in the PVMing scene, then, um, you know, I kind of waited for me to get my Max Cape and then the Infernal Cape. Here's the reasoning behind this. I have never really been a huge PVMing person, and after maxing, I was like, you know, I'm going to get an Infernal Cape. Because not only is it going to be, you know, the best item in the game, the Max Infernal Cape is one of the pinnacle items in old-school RuneScape, but it is also going to give you the mentality of like, if you can beat the Inferno, you can beat any single thing that you set your mind to, even if it's, you know, solo TOB, solo Chambers of Zarek, even though in my personal opinion those are way more difficult than the Inferno itself, but that's because I don't raid too much. Um, so the Infernal Cape is going, to get, is going to put you in the state of mind that if you can beat the Inferno, you can do anything you set your mind to in the game, both in terms of skilling, in terms of PVMing, and in terms of collection log, or, you know, pretty much anything you can think of. A uh, little fact about this one, it took me 27 attempts to get my Infernal Cape after blood, sweat, and tears uh, were spilled in my computer. Well, this is the number two tip that I can give you guys, but remember that this can go in the late game if you guys are very good at the game, or if you are at least better than I am. Number three is going to be getting expensive items. Now, what do I mean by expensive items? In the previous video, I told you guys that we could potentially buy the armor and weapons that are meta for training, like for example, Bandos, Armadil, you can buy a Rapier, you can buy a Dragon Hunter crossbow, Armadil crossbow, so things that are not necessarily out of this fucking planet expensive, and, you know, not that it's like 
unreachable by any means. But this time around, we can actually buy armor and weapons that are, you know, that give you a ton of benefits in return. Things like a Twisted Bow, a Scythe of Vitur, the Kodai Wand, and even you can buy Ancestral here. Now, not only that, one thing that you should know is that we now have items in the game that seem to be above max cash level. So for players who already have a ton of money and you already have max gear, you have everything you could ever wanted. You have things like the third age Druidic uh, robe top, robe bottom, the third age pickaxe, which I personally believe are the ones that go for max cash. I may be missing one of them, but you guys can let me know in the comments. So you can grind for both incredibly expensive and useful items and armor, and you can also go ahead and grind for these flex items that, you know, at this particular point in time, that's all they are. Flex items, but, you know, getting as much money as you can in the game by either making it, you know, from PVMing or PKing or, you know, by staking, <laughs> this could be a really, really good goal for you to, you know, kind of achieve that sense of completion for your bank, at least. Number four is a weird one because this item only has one niche use. I'm talking about the music cape. Now, not only does it look great, I personally love uh, black and white items, especially for capes, that is why in RuneScape 3 I have my Archaeology 120 cape as my uh, as my cosmetic override, <laughs> a little uh, tangent right there, but the music cape is going to be useful for you to teleport directly to, fa to Fallow when you are doing Elite and Master Clues. Now you may be like, mm, well Kales, isn't this, you know, technically not endgame? Is it really, like, not too important for you to get one item that teleports you to just one location? Well, that is correct, but one of the following tips that I'm going to give you guys is all about Master Clues. And if you are someone who wants either the Bloodhound pet or if you are after the collection log, then obviously the Music Cape is going to save you so much time when getting directly to Fallow, because in my personal experience, the Fallow steps are so common in Master Clues that, you know, you can just go to a bank, have your Music Cape in your inventory, and then you go to Fallow, and he, you know, and he tells you, oh, I'm looking for this item. You teleport right back with your crafting cape, get the item, go to Fallow, and that's pretty much it. So in the long term, it is going to save you a lot of time, even though it has one niche use. So I would put this one right here at number four. And for the last time in this mini series, number five is going to be a tip completely up to you guys. If you are brand new to this little mini series, brand new to the channel, this is what we've been doing in the past. I am going to ask you guys for one of two things. If you are already an endgame player, make sure to let me know what you are personally doing in the game to keep it fresh for you and for you guys who want to leave your feedback or your suggestions, make sure to leave me a comment giving me your number one most essential end game tip for old school RuneScape. I understand that maybe the more players who are here, you know, maybe not as many of them are going to be, you know, either maxed or, you know, have max cash or everything. So not only do I want tips from maxed players so you guys can give us your tips, but if you are not at this point in your account yet, I want you guys to tell me what you want to do if you were to max and if you were to reach the end game in Old School RuneScape. Remember that the comment with the highest amount of likes in 24 hours is going to receive a bond. And also with your comment, make sure to include your RuneScape name so you can add me and then we can go ahead and, you know, meet up to give you the nice little bond. So number tip, completely up to you guys for the final time in this mini series. Number six is actually one of my favorite ones and it is going to be grinding clue scrolls. Now, obviously the master clues are going to be the best ones. And one tip that I just remembered is that I could potentially give you guys a, a, a little guide on how to get master clues efficiently. This is incredibly useful for two things. Number one, you are obviously going to grind the master clues, the master caskets for the things I said before, you know, collection log, money, and of course the bloodhound pet. But it gets really interesting at some point, because if you think about it, the best way of achieving elite clues, well, I mean, I, I think the best one would be opening little impling jars, but the ones that give you uh, elite clues are super expensive, if that's even a thing. I know that the hard ones exist from implings, right? But if you guys do PVMing for elite clues, if you go to Barrows, if you um, have that 1 in 33 chance, uh, Vorkath has a 1 in 50 chance of obtaining it, some other monsters would be Cerberus, the Calphite Queen, Hydra, so many monsters that drop the elite clue scrolls are going to make you so much money in the end, and you are basically going to knock or shoot or 
throw? I, I, I forgot the idiom for this one. You guys are going to kill two birds with one stone. Not only are you going to grind your master clues, but you are also going to make a ton of money in the process. That is also going to help you out for other goals I have, like for example, buying the expensive items. So obviously, master clue scrolls would be a number six and one of my favorite things to do in the game, as it is not intuitive, but you know, it's really enjoyable going after all of those clues. Just uh, to close out this little one, if you guys are looking forward to, um, you know, to uh, getting your Master Clue Scrolls from Watson in Hosidius, I believe it is, you can also get your hard clues from either Hellhounds or Jelly, so you can actually burst them in the Catacombs of Karend. You can get your mediums from Eclectic Implings, and you can also get the easy clue scrolls from uh, uh, Thieving, the Ham members at the Ham Hideout. So, number six, one of my favorite ones. Number seven is actually going to be the only one that will group two things together, and it's basically because because they are the same thing. I'm of course talking about the collection log and the pets. If you guys are pet hunting, this would be one of the most important things to do, as you know, we all like the little boss variants following us around, but uh, since the pets are part of the collection log, you could potentially uh, look into maybe not maxing the collection log, because this is exactly what we're going to talk about in this little topic, you know, the impossibility of it in, in, some, for, in some sort of way, but this is going to be an incredible goal for people who think the game is getting dull and boring. You can do so much content in order to fill out the collection log that's, you know, getting to the end game. If you guys think there's not a lot to do, if you guys think there's not a lot of content in Old School RuneScape going on, especially at the particular moment, the collection log is going to be your savior. You're going to have to do so many activities, so many bosses, demi-bosses, and, so, and some other activities like minigames and forgotten activities that we've had in the game for so long long, but that are going to give you this nice little uh, sense of achievement, reward. Not only that, with the bosses and the activities, but remember that the clue scrolls are also part of the collection log. If you do the beginner, easy, medium, and of course, hard and elite, and, you know, getting the masters could potentially take quite a while, but especially beginner, easy, and mediums could be a very nice way to start out your collection log hunting if you are going for that quote-unquote 100%. The things I've been mentioning in the past about quote-unquote completing RuneScape is that this is technically and physically impossible, unless you are literally cheating at the game. What do I mean by this? If you guys don't know, I believe that at the point of, at the time of making this video, I do not know if this update was already pushed, but the master, uh, not the master, sorry, the third age items as well as the gilded items are already in like their separate category in the master clues because of how rare and incredibly difficult it is to get, you know, just one piece. So putting them in the elite and the master clues or even the hard ones, since you can get third age from those, is going to be very cringe if someone wants to see a 100% completion in uh, in the in the clues, but then you get cocked by third age and some of the other incredibly rare items that you could potentially have. So not to make this point too long, this the collection log as well as pet hunting is going to keep the game fresh for you guys, and you are going to be able to you know spend a, ri a ridiculous amount of hours trying to complete it, even though like I said before. That is technically impossible. So, that's it for number 7. The next one is going to be all about PVMing and even some activities that track your progress and that track your best time when completing the activity. And speaking about time, I am of course talking about personal best times. If you guys use Rune Light, you can check your PBs with uh, the little command that's like exclamation point PB. And one, one very important thing to keep the game fresh and to challenge yourself, especially because the combat diaries are coming up, is to best or to improve your times when killing certain bosses. Now this is going to be incredibly important in the future because at the time of making this video, I am going to release it on the 12th of July. The PVM diaries or the combat diaries, whatever they're going to call it, are going to come out on the 21st of July and you guys could potentially look forward to training and uh, trying to beat your best times in order for, <laughs> am I saying in order too many times? I think I am. Uh, for you guys to improve your times as well as uh, hopefully completing those times that look, you know, for me, I don't have a lot of PBMing experience, but uh, yeah, for me, it looks like it's going to be one of the very few things I'm not going to complete in old school RuneScape, but for you guys, 
guys who are more versed in the PVM scene, then obviously it is going to be an incredibly important thing to improve your times as to complete the PVM diaries, or the combat diaries, as I said. Number 9 is going to be all about money, just like number 3, which we talked about really expensive items. But this time, it is going to be for your house. If you guys think the game is getting too boring, too dull, you could look into maxing your house in terms of visuals, in terms of, uh, you know, as many rooms as you possibly could, both uh, upstairs and the ground floor, as well as the dungeon. Now, why is this maybe at the bottom of this list is because this is not exactly important. This it could be useful for people uh, looking into hosting or being host for their house in order to offer the services that they have inside of their humble abode. Even though from some videos I've watched in the past, I don't remember who it was, either Colonello or Crumb, the black market and the competition for the house hosting is incredibly, incredibly shady and uh, to a point, very nasty. So if you guys are looking forward to that, uh, you can have your nice little tipping jar at the entrance of your house and hopefully if people like your services, they are going to go ahead and tip you and in turn, this is also going to be a money, well, maybe not a money sink because uh, people are giving their money to someone else. Else, but you can also generate a little bit of GP from this nice little activity if you have your house set all the way to max requirements and you can offer the service to anyone. And last but definitely not least, I am going to have achieving base whatever million experience you want in the game. Whenever I got a little bit bored of old school RuneScape, I was like, you know, I think level 99 and everything is nice, but what about we make it 100? So I looked at the level 100 on the RuneLite, and to get virtual level 100, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but me personally, I got base 15 million experience. So if you look me up on RuneLite, it is going to show that I have a ba uh, base level 100, which in my opinion looks very cool. So, you guys could potentially look into getting base 15 million, 20 million, 25, 50, 100, or even 200 <laughs> if you are one of the 12 or 11 people who are already super maxed out. But this is not only going to keep the game, may maybe not fresh because you are doing the same activities if you focus only on one, but if you keep cycling through skills, it is going to, you know, give you a nice little uh, breath of fresh air. And me personally, I am going for 200 million cooking. The reason for this is because at this particular point in time, I literally and physically do not have any more time to, um, <laughs> you know, to, to play the game. I work full time, I teach, and then I make my RuneScape videos, and uh, I am left with like one hour a day to play. So whenever I'm at work, whenever I'm editing, I am just, you know, at the mid guild cooking, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you guys could also look forward to, you know, getting a lot more money by training or by either spending your hard-earned goal in buyable skills for those base whatever million experience you are going to get. So how do you quote-unquote beat RuneScape, even though, you know, this is the last time I say it, it's kind of impossible? Well, in my personal opinion, you should have the Max Cape, the Quest Cape, the Achievement Diary Cape, the music cape, and the collection log, even though, yeah, with the third age and the gilded, uh, a little bit difficult. But if we exclude those, then that is going to be kind of the way for you to know when you have finished or beat, beaten, beaten the game. It's difficult, it will take a lot of time, but trust me, if you want to go even harder, you could also go for 200 million experience, but that's adding just, uh, you know, maybe more years to the little uh, goal that we set for ourselves. So, this is, in my personal opinion, what you should have in order to, quote-unquote, beat RuneScape. And last but not least, you guys are seeing some footage of me giving the winner of the previous comment contest their bond. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your nice little comment that was pretty well received. It looks like a lot of people liked it. Here, uh, here I am giving him his 5 million GP, even though I think I'm getting scammed because the bond is 4.7 or 4.8 at the moment. Moment, so, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, 5 million to him, and I have to give two honorable mentions in the previous video. For the late game goals, we have uh, Kyber, who says, so, by the way, the, the, for the Spirit Tree and the Fairy Ring, you need 90 construction. Thank you very much to, uh, to everyone who reminded me that I had a little mistake, and for that one, you need 90 construction. I had, like, maybe 15 comments telling me that I was wrong. And also, shout out to Willie Go for saying that he was watching that video in the bathroom at a wedding. Thank you, Legends. But actually, the winning comment, which was a tip, was for Linkorb Gaming, who says, go for 1,000 Vorkath kills. You'll make a lot of 
of money and maybe even get Borky. So his late game gold suggestion is all about PVMing and thank you very much. I will, uh, by the time you're watching this, I would have uh, already contacted you and given you your bond. And finally, remember that we have YouTube memberships available. So if you want to go ahead and monetarily subscribe to this channel, there are going to be many perks that I can offer you guys for uh, uh, for your money in return, if that's even <laughs> if that's even how you say it. So thank you very much to Maniac, who I made a mistake in the previous video. He is not Rune tier, he is Berserk tier. And we have our first madman by the name of Josh in the Infernal tier. I'm already in, in contact with him. I'm going to coach him in terms of video making, uh, uh, maybe some editing, uh, thumbnails and titles and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a few things with him in the future. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. But that's pretty much it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great week. And I will see you in the next one. Ba -ba -ba Peace.